You know, tell me, you still believe in God? Why don't you just curse God and die? Get out of it. Look what God's done to you. Hey, God ain't done nothing to you but good. My God is a good God. I want you to know that he's a good God today. And you, hey, you blame it on sin. You blame it on the devil. Don't blame it on God if bad things happen, if things happen that you say, oh, this shouldn't happen to Christians. You just remember that's the devil. It's not God. It's the devil that's doing all those things. And so, hey, boy, there is an invasion of the home today. Okay, let me jump on the, the second thought right quick and uh, the third thought right here, the eighth thought, whichever one it is. What about your home? What about the modern home? What about your home? Has the devil ever invaded your home? He sure has. I'll tell you right now, there's an onslaught of the devil. He sure is. Well, there's wife abuse. You think, you think God's pleased with a man beating up on his wife? Hey, if you want to beat up on somebody, join that uh, strong man contest. Jump in there with somebody your size. Let them beat the stuffings out of you. See how big a man you are. You can beat that little old wife around. Hey, God didn't take a bone out of a man's hand for him to beat on his wife. He didn't take a bone out of his foot to, for him to stomp on his wife. He took it out of his side for him to love that wife. And so you have wife abuse. You have child abuse. I mean, beat up on kids. Hey, God provided a place for them. Apply the Board of Education, the seat of learning, right? And so that works. Then there's drug abuse, alcohol abuse, sex abuse, incest in the family. Boy, I can't, you know, I can't believe some of the stuff I hear. I mean, it's so far out, brother. The devil hatched it out of hell. That's all I can say. Who would uh, commit such stuff with their kids and things like that? I mean, it's belched out of hell, right? That's where it's belched out of. Then there's the economic factors that's invade the home. It takes two anymore almost to make a living, right? And then you know what? They got all this Sunday work. One time I was listening, Brother Jimmy Robbins preached. He was, he's dead now in heaven, but Brother Jimmy Robbins, once I heard him preaching on radio, he said, Hallelujah! Walk a mile's out of business. I thought, wonder why he's shouting over, Walk a mile being out of business. He said, They got our blue laws thrown out. Hallelujah, they're out of business. Hey, hey, brother, I'll tell you what, there's so much Sunday work anymore, you can't get half the folks in church. What is more important, your pocketbook? Are the house of God, which is more important, your welfare, are your, your body welfare, your physical welfare, your soul's welfare. Fire. It's your soul welfare, right? Yes, sir. And so there's people working on Sunday all the time, never get off, never get off, never able to go to the house of God. Hey, hey, you need to be in the house of God. You need to be in the house of God every Lord's Day, right? Then what about modern technology? You got the internet, you got tablets, you got iPods. A lot of the churches I go into, you know, it's got these screens up here. The first thing is they cut your telephones off, your iPads, your, uh, your tablets and everything, unless you're following the Bible, unless you got the scriptures on it, following the Word of God, just cut it off. You say, I might miss something. Yeah, you'll miss something, all right. You'll miss a blessing from the Lord. That's what you'll miss. Hey, 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 I just turn them off. And then what about all these other things? What about television? You think television is an invasion of the home? Hey, television's a blessing for us to get the gospel out, right? But hey, what is it doing to other people? What's it doing to young folks? You know, if you watch two hours of television a day, you know how many hours that would be a year? 730 hours. Ten years, that'd be 7,300 hours of television. When you get to heaven, you say, oh, Lord, I've done good. I watched 7,300 hours of television. Think about how much prayer you can spend, <laughs> how much uh, reading the Bible you could spend. Let me jump down here. You know, they say about six hours what kids spend a day, but I figured up five hours a day. If you spent five hours a day watching television, that'd be 1,825 hours a year. Ten years, that'd be 18,250 hours. 18,250 hours. 20 years, that's 36,500 hours. Watching television. How much television do you watch? You ever time yourself to see how many hours a day you spend? Compare that how much time you spend in the Word of God. Compare that how much time you spend praying. Compare that with how much time you spend in church. Most folks don't even spend six hours a day uh, a week in church, do they? They spend all that many hours a day watching television. Television is educating our kids at this day and time. Well, what kind of education are they getting anyway? TV is educating your kids. You know that? Well, what kind of education are they getting? Well, they're getting educated on drinking, on alcohol. 
They go in and make it look big, you know, make it look cool. They want to look cool, boy. Them kids, they want to look cool. And so they want to drink like them folks they see on TV. They're heroes. They learn about the occult. They learn about violence. Man, I mean, this is, it's a violent thing out there now. They learn how to cuss. You know, little old kids never have heard any cussing around home. They hear it on TV. You know, that's one thing that'll stick in your mind like a barb. It sticks right in your mind. As I've told you, Dad never did cuss. I never did hear my dad use one cuss word. Sometimes Mama get mad and use bathroom words. <laughs> Sorry, Mom. <laughs> but you know what? When I got out of school and I went to the dairy farm and worked a while, and them fellas cussed, and I'm thinking, get out of my mind, man, get out of my mind. You know, nudity is bad, but profanity is worse. Because it sticks in your mind, right? Sticks in your mind. And so they learn about uh, cursing and they were, learn about adultery and they learn about murder and they learn about fornication. They learn about sodomy. It's getting to be a common thing anymore, this sodomy thing. They're trying to push it, push it, push it on you, push it on your kids. Oh, my soul. There's a wrong view of marriage. If they watch television, they ain't going to get a right view of marriage, right? They get a false view of marriage. They learn about pornography, right? On the TV, on the internet, they learn about pornography. You know, they say 80% of kids under 17 have seen our rated movies, and 25% of them try to act it out. Pornography, is, uh, you know, has uh, invaded the kids down 9 to 10. They're trying to introduce pornography to them. What am I saying? You see, the modern home is in, has an invasion. The devil has invaded the modern home. That's what you're having to put up with this day and time. The media has invaded the home, and it's not good. Y'all still with me? Say amen. amen. If you're not, say oh me. Okay, there's invasion. I want you to note some invaluable things in the home. The home needs some things, some things that's invaluable. If we're going to win, you know when... Somebody invades a country, invades something, that means they're going to take it over. They're going to conquer it. They're going to rule it. They invaded Ziglag and burned it down. That's where David and his family was living. And all those 600 men that were with him, that's where their family was at. They took them captive. And that's what the devil wants to do. He wants to take your kids captive. He wants to burn the churches down. He wants to burn the Bibles. That's what he wants to do. You say, I don't believe that, preacher. Hey, you just wait and see if the devil takes over. And so, hey, what's the home need? Some invaluable thing. First of all, the home needs leadership. Leadership. Well, where do you get leadership? For the father. They say there's 20,000 kids who go to bed every night that has no father in the home. 20,000 kids. Can you imagine 20,000? I can't imagine growing up in the home without a dad. My dad came home every evening from work. He worked at Champion Paper, and he came home every evening. And then he put his work clothes on to go to work out in the field. We had lived on a farm. He was working every evening doing something. And uh, he was teaching me some things about that. And, hey, you need some leadership in the home. And the father ought to be the leader. And I know many single mothers has to be the leader. And that's a shame. You know, these old deadbeat fathers. Somebody ought to give them a whipping and wake them up or do something to them. Knock a knot on their head and say, wake up. Be the man you ought to be. Be a father to them kids. I don't want somebody else... Uh, my kid's calling somebody else, Daddy, would you? By the good grace of God, that never happened to me by his good grace. And so the daddy is to be the spiritual leader. Hey, lead them kids to Christ. Lead them to Christ. Lead them to church. Lead them to Sunday school. Lead them to the house of God. If you want to be a real leader, lead them to Jesus. Lead them to the Son of God. Lead them in the truth. It'll be a blessing, won't it? It sure will. You lead by example, right? You can't tell them kids, don't curse if you curse. You can't tell them not to smoke if you smoke. You can't tell them not to drink if you drink. You set your example. You lead by example. Show them what a real Christian ought to be. Show them what a real dad ought to be. Y'all still with me? Say amen. Just hang on. We're going, we're going. Amen. Yes, sir. So the dad ought to be the leader in the home. Well, we need leadership in the home. Number two, we need love in the home, right? Love in the home. That's what the Bible says, love one another. Love ought to permeate the home. It's more than just a feeling. Love is more than just a feeling. The husband ought to love his wife. The wife ought to love her husband. The, the parents ought to love their kids. And the kids ought to love their parents. That's the way it ought to be, right? Love in the home. 
Let me give you this. Somebody said love is the princess of emotions. It is the princess of emotions. Love is taking a second job to help the family make ends meet. That'd be all right, wouldn't it? Love is enjoying simple times together even when more romantic scenery is unavailable. It's not always honey and sugar and all that stuff, right? Hey, you know, people get married on TV. They live happily ever after. Sometimes, you know, some stories say that. Uh, but that's not right. Uh, where this came from, this lady went, she wrote some poems about love, and she went down the editor, and uh, she said, uh, I'm looking to get these poems printed. And he said, well, tell me about one or two. I'm reading about one or two. Oh, she went re reading about this mushy stuff and all this, the, you know, the moonlight and all this starlight and all this stuff. And he said, wait a minute. He said, that's not love. He said, this is love, some of the stuff I'm giving you. Love is not just a feeling, feeling of a tender moment. It's not just a feeling. Love is more than emotion. Love is a will. It's a will to love somebody. It's a will to set your affections upon somebody and be the right kind of person towards somebody. Love is able to endear the worst tempests, the worst storms in life. You need love in the home. Husbands love your wife as Christ loved the church and gave himself for it. Wives love your husband. Kids love your parents, right? Then number three, you need harmony in the home. What can a uh, home do without harmony? This and pulling this away and this and pulling that way and this and pulling over here. Everybody going a different way. Hey, there ought to be harmony in the home. How can two walk together except they be agreed? There's got to be some agreement somewhere. There ought to be harmony in the home. And then there ought to be, number four, some respect in the home, right? There ought to be some respect. Some people don't respect each other. I'd hate to live with somebody I didn't respect, wouldn't you? Would you want to live with somebody you didn't respect? If you don't respect them, bring them to the altar and get them where you can respect them, amen? Get them right. <laughs> get them right, and then you can respect them. Number five, there ought to be some understanding in the home. You know, a man will never completely understand a woman. A woman will never completely understand a man. Somebody said amen. How many of you women say Amen. How many of you men say amen? amen. Well, the women's strong with y'all. Hey, you never completely understand. They say a man thinks out of one side of his brain, a woman thinks out of the other side. Sometimes you don't. You think they don't think out of either one of them. <laughs> but anyway, you know, you're a man and she's a woman. But you know what? A man has to understand his wife or she understands him or not. You see, he's the head of the home. He's, he's the responsible one. And so, you know, I've said it, and I'll say it again. If a home fails, God goes to the father. God goes to the husband. Why did your home fail? If she has, I mean, if he has, if he has loved his wife as Christ loved the church, if he has went to church and prayed and lived for God and dedicated himself to God and been all that he should have been, done everything he could to save his home, then God will go to the wife. The responsibility rolls off of him on to her, right? I had a fellow got mad at me. He said, that ain't right, preacher. Well, it is right, too. Hey, just because you don't agree with something, some, sometimes people are guilty. They don't agree with you. They're guilty. The old saying is, the guilty dog hollers. You throw a rock in the crowd of dogs, and one that hits going to be the one that hollers, right? And so if you holler, we know you're guilty, right? And so they ought to be some understanding, understanding each other. Understanding about things in life, we ought to understand. That would be that understanding at home. Y'all still out there? Say amen. amen. Y'all off quiet. Maybe you're getting it. I don't know. Number six, especially if there's kids there. Of course, all of us got to be disciplined. We've got to discipline ourselves, right? you got to discipline your own self. I mean, you can't just go out there and buy anything and everything you want. That'd be mighty nice, wouldn't it? Now, you might, if you won the lottery or something, you might be able to go out there and spend for a while and buy everything you want, but pretty soon, psh, zero, zero balance, and then it goes in the red, and then you're owing a whole bunch. But you've got to be disciplined, right? There's discipline in everything in life. You've got to be disciplined even in your eating. You've got to be disciplined in your lifestyle. But they ought to be disciplined at home with the kids. I mean, you've got to correct those kids. You can't let them kids run wild. I've seen people go in cafes and they let the kids boop, 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 boop. I mean, other people trying to enjoy themselves too. I said, boy, I'd like to have that kid just a few minutes. I'd like to turn that kid over to mama. 
Mama knew how to make good boys out of bad ones. When they pitch them little temper tantrums, Mama didn't give in. I told you about that time when I was just, I wasn't old enough to go to school, and Mama took the other kids to school, and Merlou took her and the brothers, and Merlou, she wasn't in the car. She done got out. I had a new hat on. I was crying and screaming, Mama, let me out. I want to go. I want to go. And Mama just driving around. I got that. Throw it out the window. Mama didn't stop. She just kept a trucking. <laughs> right on down the line she went. Hey, boy, that'll break you from throwing your new hat away. Yeah, that'll, that'll break you from, I told you about the time I laid out of school. Mama knew how to break you. She didn't give in to these little tantrums and things. Had this, you know, substitute teacher, and I didn't like her, and I thought she'd going to be there the next day, so I pretended to be sick. Mama knew I wasn't sick. She said, if you stay out, I'm going to take, take you and have your tonsils taken out. <laughs> I said, oh, she won't do that. She did that. <laughs> she got me ready and took me down. They didn't take you to the hospital in. They took you to the doctor's office. She had my tonsils taken out. She didn't ever have no problem me laying out no more. I mean, Mom, and you had a break. Little boy, hey, that's what kind of parents you need today. You need some discipline in the home, right? My soul in Jesus' name. Then number seven, you need some instruction in the home. I ain't going to preach all day. I'm almost to the bottom. Tammy used to say, Daddy, Mama, is he back to the bottom? Almost to the bottom. <laughs> Instruction, you ought to teach them. Teach them kids something. They come in the world a slate clean, a clean slate. You're responsible as parents to put something on that slate. What are you putting on that slate anyway? Well, you ought to teach them about health for sure. Your health is important. You've got to carry that old body around and you check out of here. Ain't no fun to be sick, is it? How many of y'all like to spend time in the hospital? Let's see your hand. None of you? What about you like to spend time in the doctor's office? Let's see your hand. None of you? How many like to take medicine? You enjoy taking medicine? Let's see your hand. None of you. Well, don't you think it's important to teach them about health? It sure is. What about finances?